Welcome back to Fascinating History. Today we take a journey through the terrible things the Russians did in Berlin in 1945. In the spring of 1945, Berlin transformed from a bustling metropolis to a city under siege, a place where the horrors of war were about to reach their chilling climax. As the Soviet forces encircled the Nazi stronghold, the streets of Berlin bore witness to a series of disturbing events, events that would forever change the course of history. Today, we're peeling back the layers of those fateful days to reveal the untold stories of Berlin in 1945, a time marked by both liberation and unspeakable tragedy. So what led to these extreme measures by the Soviet forces? Was it merely the fog of war, a quest for revenge, or a more complex interplay of emotions and circumstances? Well, let's get started. In April 1945, the final chapter of World War II was being written, as the Soviet Union's Red Army prepared for its ultimate offensive against Nazi Germany. This decisive phase marked a military operation and the culmination of years of relentless warfare. The Soviet forces, determined to capture Berlin and bring Hitler's regime to its knees, advanced with a ferocity born from years of brutal conflict. The cost of this final push was astronomical. The Soviet army, deploying millions of soldiers, engaged in some of the bloodiest battles of the entire war. The landscape of Eastern Europe was transformed into a vast battleground, with thousands of tanks and heavy artillery pieces shattering cities and countryside alike. The human cost was equally staggering. Countless soldiers on both sides lost their lives in this final onslaught, and the civilian population suffered immensely. Cities were reduced to rubble, and the scars of war were etched deeply into the continent's fabric. This chapter of the war was not just about military tactics and strategies, it was a testament to the resilience and determination of the Soviet forces, who were driven by the goal of ending Hitler's tyranny and avenging the suffering inflicted upon their homeland. The Battle of oder Neisse, commencing on April 16, 1945, was a pivotal moment in the final stages of World War II. This ferocious battle was fought on the outskirts of Berlin, serving as a prelude to the city's eventual fall. The Soviet Red Army, nearly a million strong, faced a formidable German defense, determined to protect the gateway to their capital. The battle was characterized by its unprecedented scale and intensity. Over four days, the Soviet forces launched relentless attacks against the German lines, employing a vast array of artillery, mortars, and rockets. The air above the battlefield roared with the sounds of aircraft, adding to the cacophony of war. The cost was immense. Approximately 42,000 soldiers from both sides lost their lives, and the landscape was scarred with the remnants of destroyed tanks and equipment. This battle was not just a military confrontation, but a symbol of the desperation and determination of the Soviet and German forces. For the Soviets, victory at oder Neisse was crucial for encircling Berlin and hastening the war's end. For the Germans, it represented a final futile attempt to stem the tide of the advancing Red Army. The aftermath of this battle set the stage for the final assault on Berlin, marking the beginning of the end for Nazi Germany. As the Soviet forces encircled Berlin in late April 1945, the city braced for a siege of unprecedented ferocity. The Soviet artillery barrage that commenced was a display of military might aimed at crushing the last bastion of Nazi resistance. April 20th, Adolf Hitler's 56th birthday saw the city subjected to relentless shelling, more intense than any witnessed in the European theater of war. The symbolism was stark, a brutal ultimatum to the Third Reich to surrender or face annihilation. The Soviet strategy was not just about military dominance, it was psychological warfare designed to break the spirit of the German defenders and their Fuhrer. Hitler, ensconced in his bunker, was rapidly losing his grip on reality. Even as the Red Army advanced, his refusal to concede defeat symbolized his descent into delusion and despair. The situation in Berlin was dire. The city's defenses were crumbling, and civilian casualties were mounting. 
The Soviet encirclement was a strategic masterstroke, cutting off any potential German reinforcements and supplies. This chapter of the siege highlights the desperation of the Nazi regime in its final days and the overwhelming power of the Soviet military machine. It was a moment in history where the fate of Berlin in the entire war hung in the balance, dictated by the relentless Soviet advance and the crumbling resolve of a once feared dictator. The fall of the Third Reich began with the breach of Berlin's defenses on April 29, 1945. The Soviet Red Army, having encircled the city, launched a final decisive assault. The battle for Berlin was characterized by intense urban combat, with Soviet forces encountering fierce resistance from German soldiers and even civilians. The fighting was brutal and uncompromising, unfolding street by street, building by building. The Reichstag, a symbol of Nazi power, became the focal point of the struggle. The Soviets, despite their numerical superiority and firepower, faced stubborn resistance, indicative of the desperation and nihilism that had taken hold of the German defenders. Meanwhile, in his bunker, Adolf Hitler was a man defeated, both militarily and psychologically. His marriage to Eva Braun and drafting his last will and testament were the final acts of a leader who had led his nation into ruin. On April 30th, as Soviet forces made significant inroads into the city, Hitler and Braun ended their lives, a symbolic end to the Nazi regime. The capture of the Reichstag by Soviet troops marked not just a military victory, but the end of an era. The image of the Soviet flag flying over the Reichstag would become an enduring symbol of the war's end. This chapter captures the dramatic and tragic final moments of the Third Reich. Und wir werden in unserem Zeichen wieder siegen! A regime that had unleashed untold suffering across Europe, now meeting its end in the ruins of its capital. In the wake of the Soviet victory, Berlin lay in ruins, a city shattered by the relentless siege. By May 2, 1945, the combat in Europe was officially over, but the scars of the battle were deeply etched into the city's landscape and people. The once vibrant metropolis was now a desolate wasteland, with its buildings reduced to rubble and its streets littered with the debris of war. The human cost was equally devastating. The siege had not only claimed the lives of countless soldiers, but also inflicted immense suffering on the civilian population. The psychological impact of the siege was profound, with survivors grappling with the trauma of loss, destruction, and the collapse of a regime that had once seemed invincible. The Soviet forces, having achieved their military objective, now faced the daunting task of administering a city in chaos. The immediate aftermath of the siege was marked by a struggle to restore order, provide relief to the beleaguered population, and begin the process of rebuilding. This chapter of the story is a poignant reminder of the harsh realities of war, where victory often comes at a staggering human and material cost. It underscores the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable adversity and the arduous recovery journey that follows the cessation of hostilities. The Soviet occupation of Berlin brought with it a dark and disturbing aspect of war. Widespread sexual violence against German women. This chapter delves into one of the conflict's most tragic and often overlooked consequences. Historians estimate that the number of women who suffered sexual violence at the hands of Soviet soldiers ranged from tens of thousands to possibly two million. This horrific legacy left a profound and lasting impact on German society. The victims of these atrocities faced not only physical and psychological trauma, but also social stigma and isolation. Their communities shunned many, and some were driven to suicide by the shame and despair they endured. The issue of sexual violence in wartime Berlin also raised complex questions about the nature of retribution, the conduct of soldiers, and the broader implications of war on civilian populations. This chapter confronts these problematic topics, shedding light on the human cost of war that extends beyond the battlefield. It's a sobering account of the suffering inflicted upon innocent civilians and a stark reminder of the need for accountability and justice in the aftermath of conflict. The legacy of this period continues to resonate in discussions about war crimes, the protection of civilians in conflict zones, and the enduring impact of war on society. 
The fall of Berlin in May 1945 marked the definitive end of the Nazi regime, a turning point in world history. The city's surrender on May 2nd was followed by Germany's unconditional surrender on May 7th, officially ending the war in Europe. This momentous event, known as Victory in Europe, or VE Day on May 8th, was met with relief, jubilation, and somber reflection across the globe. The chapter explores the immediate aftermath of the surrender, highlighting the profound impact on both the victors and the vanquished. It was a time for the Allies to celebrate the hard-won victory and honor the immense sacrifices made. For Germany, it was a period of reckoning as the nation confronted the atrocities committed under Nazi rule and began the painful process of rebuilding from the ruins. The chapter also delves into the broader implications of the war's end, including the political, social, and economic challenges ahead. The legacy of the Nazi regime continued to cast a long shadow over Europe, shaping the post-war world in profound ways. This chapter provides a comprehensive overview of the end of the Third Reich capturing the complexity and significance of this historical moment. So how should history remember the events of Berlin in 1945, and what lessons can we carry forward from this tumultuous period? Let us know below, and as always, see you in the next video.